to Good Libations. I'm Ethel Andrews. I'm a mixologist. And we always talk about making good cocktails with individual flourishes on them. And today we're going to do another episode about martini variants. And again, the purists among you are going to snicker and say, well, those aren't really martinis. We've discussed that issue before. Uh, many feel that a martini should involve only gin and should be stirred and not shaken. Or perhaps they'll be indulgent and allow you to use vodka, but again, it must be stirred and not shaken. Well, again, in my personal opinion, I feel that martinis are more refreshing if they're shaken like James Bond like to do it. And martini variants, again, incorporate the use of vodka, which technically makes them a martini. And they're used in a traditional shaker or in a so-called Boston shaker where they use the glass on the top of the shaker and then divest it through a filter. Now the interesting thing again about making these drinks is they've become in vogue I would say over the past decade or even more. In particular um, we did an episode a while back about two martini variants. Key lime martinis and also lemon drop martinis. But the one that possibly got people the most interested in these particular cocktails was the Cosmopolitan, thanks to the TV show Sex and the City. And again, Cosmopolitan is a worthy martini variant, no doubt about it, but it's started to fall a bit out of favor or out of vogue because people have grown a bit tired of it. And you know, some of that may be the fact too that um, people have become stereotypical about the way that they have mixed it. The formula for a cosmopolitan has always been, you know, to use vodka, Cointreau if possible, if you have deep pockets, or a triple sec, and of course cranberry juice. Now, again, when it comes to the cranberry juice, a lot of people got into the habit of using cranberry juice cocktail instead of unfiltered cranberry juice. And because of that, there was kind of a flabbiness associated with that drink, a lack of character, uh, a bit too sweet and not enough acidity or bite to the drink. What I personally do when I make a Cosmopolitan is instead of using simply cranberry juice cocktail, I like to mix it with unfiltered cranberry juice or to use cranberry juice that is not sweetened. And in addition to that, you can compensate if you don't feel it's sweet enough by using a little more Cointreau or triple sec, and that will accomplish that purpose to make it taste better. And I like to put different flourishes too on the Cosmopolitan. In addition to squeezing in the fresh lime, sometimes I'll squeeze a little bit of fresh orange in the drink. And I'll also garnish it not just with fresh lime, but with a wheel, a very, very thin wheel of orange. Sometimes I'll put cream de cassis in the drink because it makes it have a certain distinctive flavor that nobody can quite figure out. Now, today we're not gonna actually demonstrate a cosmopolitan, but as our martini variant, we're gonna talk about pomegranate martinis, which have become very popular. And they're an interesting drink. You're getting your antioxidants and your supposed health benefits, so to speak. But again, we want to put individual flourishes on the drink so it isn't stereotypical or what you would find at an average establishment or just following a recipe. Because following the recipe is fine, it gives you a guideline to go by. But if there's nothing beyond that, where's the creativity? Where's the interest? And again, a word about proper storage of alcohol. If we're making a martini or any cold drink, it's always best to first refrigerate the bottles or even stick them in the freezer. And that includes the vodka, the triple sec or Cointreau, and of course, obviously, the pomegranate juice. Because then, it's very, very cold, and the taste and the flavor will be better and more defined, and also the quality of being refreshing will be more defined as well. And the same goes for the shaker and the glass. It's always good to have them cold before you start. And we talked about the issue of ice as well. Ice should always be stored properly. It should be stored so that it is kept very, very cold. At the very least, in an ice chest, better yet, in a bar refrigerator. 
or bar freezer, I should say, or even a proper ice maker, because then it's going to not become diluted and cause the drink to become diluted, which is what we want to definitely avoid, because that detracts from the enjoyment, detracts from the character of the drink. But again, when it comes to making a pomegranate martini, we want to start with the vodka, after I put the ice in the shaker, that is. And hopefully, the ice will be cooperative and won't be in a solid chunk, as it sometimes tends to be. And after that, and again, I'm going to indulge the audience and approximate something of a measure so you'll know the ratio of the ingredients. With the vodka, what we want to do is make the ratio basically one part vodka, um, half as much triple sec or Cointreau, and about three parts, two to three parts of the cranberry juice, depending, or excuse me, the pomegranate juice, depending on how tart we want the drink to be. So we'll try to accomplish that with these measurements here. And again, this is a nice shaker because you can use the top as a measure, but that isn't always possible with all designs of shakers. Some have very, very small tops. And if that's the case, then better to use a jigger if you want to measure and not free pour. And again, about half as much of the triple sec or Cointreau should go in. And then after that, of course, we want to add the pomegranate juice. And this drink has a lovely hue to it because of the natural attributes of the, the pomegranate. So that's one thing uh, that's a plus about the drink is the eye appeal is definitely there. And after that, to add a bit of balance again and stop the drink from being flabby and too sweet, we want to add a squeeze of lemon. Now some actually like to add a squeeze of lime to their pomegranate martinis. And that's perfectly fine if you prefer it that way. I personally think that lemon pairs better with pomegranate. So that's what I, I do is I squeeze in about a quarter of a lemon. And make sure you work the oil out of the peel. And again, I like to divest it in the shaker because again, that oil is going to infuse with the juice and with the liquor. And then we want to shake it up very nicely here. And shakers are user friendly, but in many establishments, of course, the bartenders tend to use a glass on top of the actual shaker rather than going through the problem of having to pull off the top and so forth. And then we want to divest the drink into the glass. And again, you can see the lovely hue with this um, pomegranate martini. And for a garnish, you could either use a very thin full wheel of lemon, which I did not cut well, so I'm going to attempt to cut another one, or you could use a half a wheel or even just a twist and, you know, simply put it in the drink. And, and that way you're going to have that flavor of the lemon, the lemon peel, plus the pomegranate juice, the vodka, the triple sec, or Cointreau. And then we have ourselves a lovely, well-presented, well-mixed pomegranate martini. And again, we can understand why these drinks have become so popular because they're refreshing, they're different, they truly are a martini variant, and they become very popular for all those reasons. And again, let the purists snicker a bit, but they should try these drinks. They would like them in spite of themselves. And again, keep in mind, if you want to put different flourishes on it, if you want to use fresh lime instead of fresh lemon, that's fine. If you want to do other things with it, some people will add, oddly enough, um, they'll use um, citrus-infused vodka in it, which is fine also, although that tends to detract if you use that, I feel, from the pomegranate. But again, that's a nicely presented, and it will prove to be very refreshing pomegranate martini. 
And when we take these steps to make a drink innovative and enjoyable, it is an absolute plus and it'll make our bartending and mixology the hit of the party or of any group of people that we happen to be with and are, are involved in hosting a party perhaps. Okay. Now we're going to demonstrate another drink which actually is not related to martini variants. It's a classic drink but it's always maintained a certain level of popularity. And it's a dessert drink, but many people will just order it at, at, at a bar anyway, simply because they like it. And that is um, the good old White Russian. And there's other drinks that are related to the White Russian. We know there's Brandy Alexander's, which are kind of similar in the sense that typically you use an old fashioned glass when you do these drinks. And some people do like to do them in a shaker. Um, and some people who make, as an example, a white Russian, they like to have the vodka, the Kahlua, and the heavy cream all together in the shaker and shake it all up. What I actually prefer to do with these drinks is I like to float the heavy cream in a thin layer over the top because then you're drinking the drink through the cream, and I think it adds a better dimension to it. Usually that is how Irish coffee is made the proper way, as an example. And the same thing with these dessert drinks. That's a more refined way of making them that makes them taste better. Now, a Brandy Alexander, of course, incorporates something different. You're using brandy as your base, and usually white cream to cocoa. But some people like to use um, coconut infused rum, and that is perfectly fine also. And also, if we are going to use the glass, which is what I prefer to do, the old-fashioned glass, it's actually better with these drinks to put the liquor over ice and stir it, and then put the float of the heavy cream over the top. That, that is actually how it is traditionally done, but again, if you like all the ingredients together in the shaker and want to blend them that way, that's fine. But I still think it's more refined and more interesting if you float the cream over the top. And again, this particular cocktail has been around for a long time, but it has never fallen out of vogue because people really enjoy it. And to add different flourishes on a white Russian, some people like to add a little bit of vanilla vodka, and again, that's perfectly fine to do it because it kicks it up a notch, it has a different dimension to it. Some people even add, like to add a bit of hint of orange to it and it will add triple sec or orange curacao to it. And again, that's fine because it makes it a bit different and you've put your individual accent on it. But a simple drink, but actually a very good drink, and I hope the um, heavy cream cooperates and, and floats because sometimes it can be recalcitrant, but we're going to give it a try. At any rate, I'm going to put ice in the old-fashioned glass here. And we don't want too much. But by the same token, we don't want too little. So what we will do here is we'll do it the way that is traditionally done. And I'm not going to precisely measure in this particular instance, but just, you know, add your vodka. Add your Kahlua. And I think we should add a bit more vodka, actually. Doesn't hurt. And then it's very simple if you're not making it in the shaker. Just stir the drink. You can use a spoon, you can use a swizzle stick, what, whatever you feel comfortable using. And again, this is a really nice dessert drink. It's not sickly sweet if you don't add too much Kahlua. And you can also use Tia Maria. It's a similar type liqueur, simply made in Jamaica, a little bit different. And then 
hopefully, like I said, this heavy cream is going to cooperate and is going to float on the top. And if you find that it doesn't, a good thing to do, frankly, is to um, whip it up a little bit. But we'll see if we can get it to float on the top. And there's two different methods. Some like to slip it into a teaspoon and just kind of fold it over the top. But I like to invert a teaspoon, and like I said, hopefully this is going to do what we want it to do and float on the top of the drink without significant blending. And it did, pretty much, except I slopped, of course, the cream all over the place. And again, what makes this more interesting is the fact that you are sipping the drink through the cream, much like you would a properly made Irish coffee, Kiyoki coffee, or any of those type of um, liquor, liquor infused or liqueur infused coffees. And again, it tastes so much better this way, I feel, than if you simply mix all the ingredients and pour it into the glass or mix the ingredients within the glass. And the eye appeal, too, of that float of cream, I think, is a big plus in the appearance of the drink. And again, if you want to add different ingredients to that, as with the pomegranate martini, and, and make it your own drink with a different accent, that is a good thing to do. In fact, you should do that. And as I mentioned before, um, what pairs well with this drink is you could add vanilla vodka, or you could even exclusively use vanilla vodka if you want to. Uh, you can add uh, even coconut rum, as with the other martini variants. Or, and with the um, Alexander's also, or you can add an orange infused liqueur like Cointreau Triple Sec or orange Curacao. And that way the drink has more complexity and you've made it your own and it has its own flourishes and its own dimension to it. And never be afraid to experiment with drinks. You don't have to again adhere to a strict recipe because a drink is labeled something in particular. Very often, you can improve upon a drink if you do that. But always be cautious, too, because if you get carried away and pair liquors with ingredients that do not marry properly, you may come up with something that's esoteric, but it may not taste good and it may not be good. So be sure that the ingredients marry together properly and go together properly. It's very similar with cooking. If you're doing a recipe, you know, it may sound interesting to have, you know, duck with, you know, raspberry sauce and vanilla liqueur or something like that, but it may not taste good if it's made that way. And the same thing with alcoholic beverages. We want to be careful in that regard to keep them interesting, but not peculiar just for the sake of appearing innovative. Anyway, these are some drinks that you can try at home. And always have confidence about your abilities because doing that, you show that you have that creative flourish about you. And again, we always want to say enjoy our cocktails, enjoy our drinks, but let's keep our community safe and well spoken of by being moderate in our drinking habits and careful about what we do. Thank you again. I'm Ethel Andrews. And this is another episode of Good Libations. This is the Martini Variant Expansion episode, we'll put it that way. Thank you again. Goodbye.